Hi there, guys. Sorry, I'm not going to be at in class uh, today. So this is a quick video to sort of um, try and get you through. So um, I won't talk for too long, but I just wanted to um, go through some of the basics of what we covered on Monday and flesh it out a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask you to pause the video in a number of spots and try things out yourself and and then go back to the video. Try and be faithful to that, please. Um, I know that you could just watch through it really quickly, but I don't think you're going to get the best learning experience if you do that. So let's start with a, a starter activity. And um, I want you to graph log base 3 of x. I'm going to put brackets around this time. You don't usually put brackets around it, but I'm going to. Uh, sorry, I should just say that's f of x equals log base 3 of x. Now, in order to graph this, you, you might remember or you can look at your notes and you can see what the basic shape of a logarithmic graph looks like. Um, but I want you to do this now. And what you can do is um, I want you to label or, or write three critical things into your graph. Um, as well as the graph itself. So I want you to put the asymptote in. I want you to put the y-intercept in. And always, 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 the y-intercept is found by letting x equal to zero. And I want you to put the x-intercept in. And always, 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 finding the x-intercept is by setting y equal to zero. Don't forget that the basic definition of a uh, of a log is that if a to the power of y equals x then log base a of x is equal to y that's the basic definition remember so you should be able to use the basic definitions to try and solve some of this the last dot point i want you to do is i want you to do one other point and i'll give you a hint I mean, verbally, I'll just say that if you're trying to find another point, which is really common, right, that you draw the graph and then draw one other point so there's a bit of a reference for the for proportion, um, you'll pick a point that's really easy to do. So um, what would be an easy one to use? Well, log base 3 graph, I'll give you a hint and say that if you let x equal 3, that's a fairly easy solve for y, then to find the y coordinate. Okay, so here's your first pause point. I want you to pause the video and I want you to um, graph that as best you can and then I want you to come back to the video. No, you have to pause. You really do have to pause. Pause now. Okay, now I'm assuming you did pause the video. I can't tell that you've paused the video, but I'm assuming you paused the video. So how did you go drawing the graph? Did log base 3 make much of a difference from log base 10 or log base something else? If you did it right, you would have got that. And the one other point would have been 3 for the x coordinate and 1 for the y coordinate. Because log base 3 of 3 is asking the question 3 to the power of what equals 3 and 3 to the power of 1. So that's why you've got 3, 1. The other point was um, uh, 1, 0. That would have been the x-intercept. And for the y-intercept, you might have rolled your eyes maybe, or maybe you would have tried and got it wrong or got confused or whatever else and checked with someone else. But you should have found out that there is no y-intercept. And we looked at that last lesson as well. We saw that the y-intercept that the, that the logarithm graph goes towards the y-axis, but it doesn't actually cross it. And again, from a from the perspective of a um, of the definition here, it kind of makes sense. Um, three to the power of what equals zero does not exist. Three to the power of something does not will not will never give you zero as the answer. So therefore, log base a of zero does not exist, which means that it never touches the y-axis. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so I asked a sort of a, a little question there as I was as I was talking, and that is, um, does it matter what the base is? How do you think the base would, uh, changing the base here, would change the shape of this graph here? 
pause the video, have a think about it, talk about it with the person next to you if you're watching the video together. And um, yeah, then unpause the video. Okay, I'm assuming you've done that as well. Let's have a look at it from, uh, let's just draw a few more in so you can sort of get a sense of it. So if I go log base two of X, I doesn't even care whether I put Y there or not. You can see that the log base two of X graph is a lot further up like this. So it's climbing a little bit faster. Um, you can see that the point one is now obviously at two here. So that kind of makes sense. Um, and you can go log base a half as well. Just kind of works like a dilation, right? But that's not really what we're looking at here because we tend to just say, the, oh yeah, the yeah, log base a half makes it flip over like this. Is that expected? Still all cutting through here, one zero. Maybe you can think about that. Why does log base a half of x um, flip over, I wonder? Something worth talking about as well, I think. That was a chance for you to pause the video and, and just and chat about it maybe. But um, yeah, so changing the base to a fraction flips it. Um, and changing the base as the base gets larger, it starts behaving differently. Okay, so there's log base 10x, there's log base 2x, there's log base 3x. Okay, so as I make it, um, the number bigger, it's squishing closer. It, it acts a bit like a, um, a dilation, but it's not. Well, it is, but for technical reasons. Okay, but you can see that they all cut through there and that would make sense for a reason that you could possibly think of. And we can always look at the base number, and if we go over to the base number and go up, we will always get to the value one for reasons we've got into a second ago. Okay, so typically though, um, when we're considering a function, a log function, um, along with its um, transformations, we tend to just consider um, uh, the base, as remaining constant, right? So just it's a base three log graph is what we're looking at, a base 10 graph or whatever. Okay, so we're gonna stick with log base three for the next bit just to keep that constant. So it's a log base three graph, what's the effect of transformations? So I want you to do the same sort of job. Um, try not to cheat and use Desmos or your GDC or something like that. Now do f of x equals log base three of x plus two. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to do the same sort of thing as you did before. I want asymptote. I want y-intercept at x equals zero. I want, oops, x-intercept and I want one other point. And if you do this with someone else, then perhaps you could think of what would be a reasonable number to use to work that out. Okay, pause the video, and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, hopefully that's enough time. I hope you really did pause it, and I hope you really did go through this. So the trick with this one, I guess, is sort of understanding um, exactly what the asymptote's gonna do to start with. So the asymptote for, is whenever I've got the argument, the bit that I'm putting into the log function, in this case, x plus two equal to zero. So the asymptote is at x plus two equal to zero in this one because the argument's changed, the input's changed from x to x plus two, which means the asymptote is gonna be at x equals negative two. Okay, so the asymptote's gonna be further along. Now the y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. And so we will have log base three of two is equal to y. And guess what? That's not a fancy, that's not a fun number. Three to the power of what gives you two? I don't know, some kind of fractiony number. 
So I'm going to leave it as an exact value, log base 3, 2. Now if I use my calculator, um, I would get, I'm doing this on my, you can't see my calculator here, but I'm using my calculator. And you do have a log button on your calculator, remember? So you get, Oops, I stuffed off my calculator here. This is, this is great watching, isn't it? Um, sorry, let me just do that again. Yeah, you've got, uh, I've got 0.63. So that's what I got, 0.63. So that's what it's approximately equal to. Um, so I can put that down. That's approximate. Uh, it's not even three significant figures. I think it was 0.631 to three significant figures. Um, the x-intercept is when y equals zero, and therefore we have um, log base three two is equal to zero, and we don't need a calculator for that. Um, oops, gosh, I'm. You can t this is why I'm having the day off um, today is because I just can't think straight because I'm not very well. Log base 3, x is equal to 2. So what we're really asking ourselves is 3 to the power of 2 equals what? The answer is 9. So we've got um, x equals 9. Now the one other point, well, again, something like 3 is really handy, but... There's no point using x plus 3 in here because that will give me log base 3 of 5, which is a bit pointless. But if I let x equal 1, then I'm going to have log base 3 of 3 again, which will give me 1. So at x equals 1, y equals 1. So that's the point 1, 1 is the other point. And then I could go ahead and sketch it. Now I'm going to cheat and go straight to Desmos. And I'm going to graph log base 3 x plus 2 here. And you can see that if I make x equal to negative 2, that asymptote is perfect. You can see if I, um, I might just use this little dot here, and you can see it's 0.631, like I said. You can see that the one other point was at x equal 1. And when x equals 1, whoop, whoop, there we go, y equals 1. Oh, and the, um, What's the other thing I had to do? The x-intercept I stuffed up, didn't I? Because I got when x equals, the x-intercept should be minus one. So I kind of stuffed that up a bit. I'll go back and have a look at that in a second. Okay, so that's, I mean, apart from me stuffing things up, that's, ba oh, I see what I did wrong. Yeah. Uh, apart from me stuffing things up, that's basically, um, basically sorted out, right? So, let me go back to why I stuffed up and then we'll move on from there. Here we go. I don't know where that music came from. Log base 3 x plus 2 is equal to 0. Um, not equals to 2. I really stuffed that up, didn't I? So we've got 3 to the power of 0 equals x plus 2. So we're going to have x plus 2 is equal to 0. Oh, sorry, is equal to 1, because 3 to the power of 0 is 1. Oh, man, I've got, to, I've got to stop. And therefore, x is equal to negative 1, which is what we saw on the graph there. x is equal to negative 1, comma, 0. So there you go. So that's just a bit of an idea of how to graph given some information. But I want you to see that this transformation here, when I add 2 to x, the result is exactly the same graph, except that the graph has been shifted over to the left. So adding two effectively means the input is happening earlier. So log of zero is not happening at x equals zero now, it's happening at, happening at x equals negative two. So that means everything is shifted back by negative two. Not you can have log of zero, but you know what I mean, that's where the asymptote is. And everything is, is, is the same. Everything is shifted over by two units. Um, so what was an intercept at one is now an x-intercept at negative one. 
Okay, what was um, 3 comma 1 is now um, all, uh, all the way over here. Okay. So there you go. Two units down, 1 comma 1. Um, so there you go. So basically, I want to quickly go through the different translations just so that you can see them. And then you can get stuck into exercise 9F. Now, the thing I'm starting to realize is that transformations is something that we probably need to spend an entire lesson on properly. Um, I know we did go through them, but I feel like as if um, it wouldn't hurt to go through them again and again and again because transformations are pretty, uh, they, they are pretty tricky because we know there are basically three transformations, right? We know that um, there are dilations, we know that there are reflections, and we know that there are translations. So dilations is when we stretch the graph, reflections is when we flip the graph, and um, we also know that um, translations are when we shift the graph. It doesn't change in size, um, but it shifts up, down, left, or right. But within those three um, transformations, there's also subgrouping, I suppose. So when we talk about dilations, we talk about dilations um, either a stretching away from the x-axis or towards the x-axis and a stretching away from the y-axis or a stretching towards the y-axis. When we talk about reflections, it can, it can flip this way or it can flip this way. When we talk about translations, they can move left and right or they can move up and down. And it's because a transformation is a, a change to either the input of a function, i.e. we replace x with a new look at a new input or it's a transformation of the output which means the function is completely changed so we're going to work on that um, I think when I'm feeling a bit better and um, we've got time to sort of really uh, digest that a bit more okay in this sort of setup here I've got every transformation known to mankind here so I've got this here this value b here is like a translation of well I won't go through them all Let's just do one at a time. B is the transformation of the log graph. It's a, the basic function, which is log, outputs a value, and then that value is multiplied by B. So this is a dilation where the entire graph is stretched up and down. So let's have a look at that. As I move B up, every single value is being stretched. Okay, so let's have a look at this one here. What have I got a log base 10 graph? Might even make it log base three just to keep the, the theme happening. So if we have a look here at, um, at the point, uh, where is it? Uh, let's try and zoom out a bit more, there we go. If we have a look at the point, I'm stretching it still. Sorry about that. Hang on. Let me get back. There we go. If we have a look at the point three one, okay. So three units across, the output is one because this is the basic log graph, log base three of x. If I apply b and say up it to one point five, have a look at the value of the function. At three, it is now one point five. So what was one is now 1.5. That might look like a translation, but what was zero is still zero. And that's because B is what the entire function is being multiplied by. The entire function is the output. So it's the second coordinate. So when I multiply zero by 1.5, I still get zero. But when I multiply one by 1.5, I get 1.5, okay? Um, if I go back again to one and I have a look at two here, at nine, the graph is at two. When I make B 1.5, it's now going to be 1.5 lots of two. And there it is there. Okay, two times one and a half is three. So every single point along this graph has been multiplied by 1.5, which is why we get this stretching effect away from the x-axis. So it stretches away from the x-axis. If I go down into fraction land, 
say to 0 0.5, all of the output values are now been halved. Um, so at one zero, it's still one zero because half of zero is zero. But at three, it's now three and for the input and 0.5 for the output because I can't quite get it, but you can see it's roughly, it, it is there because a half of one is half. If I go to nine, I get one because half of two is one. So the net effect is that every single point has been pulled towards the x-axis. So this value here has the effect of dilating the graph either away or towards the y, the x-axis. On the other hand, this value here, A, affects the input. It's stretching x. So just so it's not confusing, I'll bring B back to 1. And if I move A up now, can you see how it's moving the graph? The graph is actually being pulled towards, it's compressing the graph towards the y-axis. And that's because, I'll go straight to A equals 2, so it's nice and clear this time. And that's because all of the values are now happening a lot earlier. So, for example, we know that the log, that log of 1 is 0. But now, because I'm, I've got it multiplied by 2, I actually need this value, ignore the minus k and stuff, this value to be 1, um, which means that if a is equal to 2, x would be a half because 2 times a half is equal to 1. And so what was 1 is now has now been pulled this way to a half. What was 2 has now been pulled to 1. What was 4 has been pulled to 2 and so on. So the dilation factor, although we've got the, the, the number is two, the dilation factor is actually a half. So when a is bigger than one, this graph is dilating towards the x-axis. Um, and when a is a fraction, it's stretching away from the y-axis. Okay, so if I go a equals a half, you can see instead of it being one, it's now equal to two for the x-intercept. OK, because now I'm sort of slowing the graph down by making it a fraction. X has to be 2 before a half times 2 equals 1, effectively. hope that kind of makes sense. Um, I'm, do I'm doing this fairly quickly, so I apologise if this is way too fast for, for you. But I'll, try I'll go through it a number of times over, this, over the two years, don't worry. Um, K and H are a little bit more easy to see what's happening. K is working on the inputs okay it's you've got this value here which then before it gets processed by the log function has k taken away from it so everything's happening a lot earlier this is what we saw before with x plus two you, now you can see i've got it in the form of ax minus k okay so if i move it this way then ax minus k is actually minus minus 2 which is plus 2 okay which is why we get the asymptote at negative 2 um, the um, the x-intercept at minus 1 and so on okay everything has been shifted back by 2 and I hope it kind of makes sense why if I do this if I do the opposite so this is now the graph of x minus 2 everything shifted that way instead okay so x minus 2 means that I have to go all the way to 3 and then subtract 2 to get back to 1 to have the log of 1, which is 0. Okay, so it's counterintuitive. All the input um, transformations are counterintuitive. Taking away a number translates it to the right. Multiplying it by a whole number actually shrinks it. Um, yeah, and um, I haven't got reflections here, but reflections pretty much work as expected, though. So if I put a minus there, Note that it doesn't. Note that it um, it flips all the way over here as well. Okay, so so the asymptote is I, I won't change it, but the asymptote will be here as well. But it doesn't flip around the asymptote or anything like that, which people often get confused with. It doesn't flip there like a mirror. The mirror is always on the y-axis. And if I put a negative here, it flips it that way. So it still goes through three zero, but it's flipping about the x-axis. Okay, the, the only one I haven't uh, looked at is plus h, and that behaves probably as you'd expect, I think. 
So if I make H positive, it goes up ways. If I make H negative, it goes down ways. So um, that works as expected. So all the transformations of the output, like B or H or negative, work exactly as expected. Um, if H is positive, it goes up. If H is negative, it goes down and so on. Okay, um, I hope that's okay. So um, that was a bit more talking than I expected to do, but I hope it was useful for you to sort of get start getting a handle on transformations. One last thing I will say um, before I tell you what work you're going to be doing. If you're trying to work out a transformation, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one, by knowing how transformations work, you, you can have an expectation of what the graph should look like. Number two, you can identify those critical points. I'll go back to here. You can identify those critical points, which are these ones here, and those critical points will allow you to have a bit more sense of where the graph is going. Okay, so my advice to you always is to work out what the asymptote, uh, where the asymptote will be, and you can do that by setting the argument, the bit inside the log, equal to zero and solving. Working out where the y intercept would be if there is one. Working out where the x intercept is if there is one. Oh, there always will be. And working out one other point and using your common sense to figure out what that common point would be in order to um, draw the graph. Once you've got those critical points in, it does make it a heck of a lot easier to draw the transformed graph in. Okay, I will leave it there for for now. Um, I'll put this under Google Classroom, but just FYI that what I want you to be doing is exercise 9F on page 409. So um, have a go through that, and um, hopefully I'll see you on Friday.